Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. If you've got shell dwellers and have been looking for something to keep with those fish, this is the video for you. Hope you enjoy it. Shell dwellers, Lake Tanganyika fish in general are some of my favorite fish in all of our fish room. We usually have between seven and eight tanks just dedicated to Lake Tanganyika fish and we have kept around eight to 10 different shell dwellers over the years. By the way, I've got a video on how to set up a shell dweller tank, which I'll put in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below, plus a lot of species profiles of the fish that we're going to be talking about also located in the description below if you want more information. Now there's a few things I wanna talk about before we get into the tank mates. Thing number one, if you've got your shell dwellers in less than a 40 breeder or less than a three foot tank, trust me, it's just better to have the shell dwellers in that tank as a species only tank if you introduce other fish, it may introduce some problems. The second thing is I generally don't like to mix different shell dwellers together. So if you've got Maltes, I don't really recommend mixing them in with Similis or Brevis. Sometimes the shell dwellers are hybridized and that can cause problems. So if you're gonna choose a shell dweller, sometimes it's best just to keep one unless you've got a really large tank like a 55 or a 75 or greater. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're going to be mixing some of the fish we talk about with your shell dwellers, expect your fry survival rates to go down. And so now if you're keeping a community tank, Lake Tanganyika tank, all of the fry survival is going to go down. That's just the way it is when you're mixing and matching fish. Okay, so one of the fish I keep with almost all of my shell dwellers is the bristlenose pleco. I know you were expecting a Lake Tanganyika fish and we're going to get to those, I promise but the bristlenose pleco is invaluable in my shell dweller tanks because it takes care of the algae on the glass and even on the shells themselves. And so I generally will keep a bristlenose pleco as long as I've got at least a 20 gallon tank or larger, there's usually one in there. Now, if you're going to do that, it's always beneficial to have some rock work in the tank somewhere where the bristlenose pleco can go if the shell dwellers decide they don't really want that pleco in their area. As a side note, I generally do not keep any general community fish with shell dwellers. So things like guppies and platies and all that kind of stuff, garamis. Generally speaking, it's a really bad idea. When shell dwellers start to breed, they become very protective of their particular environment and they will attack other fish and most community fish cannot withstand what shell dwellers are going to do to them in terms of aggression. Keep in mind that shell dwellers, when you look very closely at them, they have little fangs, they've got teeth. And so even though they're small, they can be somewhat aggressive. And when they decide to turn that aggression towards another fish, that fish on the receiving end sometimes doesn't survive. Okay, so first, Tanganyika fish that I would consider are the rock dwelling fish. These are beautiful fish and like the name implies, they tend to hang out in rocks more than shells. And so if you're gonna be setting up a Lake Tanganyika tank, again, something we talk about in that video I've got listed in the description below, you're gonna wanna have an area where there's some shells and you're gonna wanna have an area where there are some rocks, but there are some great options. The Lelupai is a beautiful orange fish that's gonna provide a lot of color to your shell dweller tank. Julitochromus ornatus. Take a look at this fish. Look how beautiful it is. It's got that yellow with the black stripes and they're really interesting fish because they like to hang around the rocks a little bit. They're not overly active and generally speaking, they get along fine with shell dwellers. The other one is Julitochromus transcriptus. This is another really pretty fish. It's got this checkerboard pattern. And again, it's got a very similar attitude, a very similar uh, type of, of personality just like the Lelupai, just like the Ornatus. And so these three fish, again, they can add a, a new dimension to that shell dweller tank where they're gonna be hanging out in rocks, they're gonna move a little bit slower, and they're gonna add a little bit of color. Now this next type of fish you could consider, these are what I like to call the open water swimmers, the most common of which is Neolamprologus bouchardii. Now you gotta be careful with this fish because just like some of the shell dwellers, like the Maltese and the Simulus, they really like to breed and they could potentially fill your tank with fry. And so I would exercise a little bit of caution. They're great looking fish, but they can fill a tank. The other open water swimmers is one I absolutely love and I've kept them with shell dwellers in the past and that is the Cyprochromus leptosoma. Take a look at these fish. Look at the colors. The males have this beautiful blue color with those yellow fins. The females stay a little bit more silver. The interesting thing is 
These fish tend to have rather large fry that they release in the open water. And so sometimes you're gonna get a little bit more fry survival with the Cyprochromus. And like I said, being an open water swimmer adds that dynamic to the middle or upper part of your tank. If you wanna go a little bit more expensive, and a little bit more rare, you've got a lot of the feather fin cichlids, the ophthalmotilapia cichlids. These are beautiful, but please keep in mind they're also extremely expensive. The males typically have all the amazing color. The females tend to be a little bit more drab, more silvery, or more brown, but this can be an absolutely show-stopping addition to your aquarium. Also keep in mind some of the feather fins can get quite large, like these Fursifer roziba that I'm showing you here. These fish might actually prey on the shell dwellers and certainly any fry, so be careful with some of the larger feather fins. Please keep in mind, once again, when we're looking at our tank mates, I'm assuming when you're adding tank mates that you've got at least a three foot tank or a 40 gallon breeder or greater. Anything smaller than that, again, you could be introducing some problems to your aquarium. Another really interesting fish are these calvis cichlids. They look predatory, they look really mean, but they stay relatively small and actually they're not all that aggressive. Now they are guaranteed to eat any fry that are in your aquarium, so keep that in mind, they are predators, but they offer a really cool look. So not only are you getting interesting colors for maybe some of the rock dwellers or some of the open water fish, but now you've got that interest in terms of fish shape with these calvis, these more predatory looking fish. Another fish you could consider, again, in a larger tank are the dwarf petrocola. These are small synodontist catfish that get to be around three inches or so, a lot of activity, and they like that harder water that you're typically gonna find your Lake Tanganyikan fish in. And again, if you're looking for some of those more scavenger type fish, these might be a good option. Again, I would make sure you have some rock work there just in case your shell dwellers don't really appreciate them being in their area, a place where they can kind of reside and not be in the face of all your shell dwellers. Now I've already mentioned again, community fish, generally speaking, just not an overall good idea just in case you get some aggression with your cichlids trying to breed. The other thing that I hope is obvious, but I, I definitely should say it, and that is no invertebrates, no snails, no shrimp. Generally speaking, your shell dwellers are not gonna tolerate them well, i.e. they're gonna probably see them as food. And so if you do have mystery snails or shrimp, just keep them out of your lake tank and you can takes just to be safe. So those are just a few options of fish you can keep with your shell dwellers. Again, we've got all the species profiles down in the description below if you want more information on how we set up our shell dweller tanks or even some cool shell dwellers that maybe you haven't considered. Check out the videos down in the description as well. Really appreciate you being here and we'll see you in the next one.